The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come. The games are for <laughs> When I think of early CD-ROM gaming technology, full motion video stands out. Of course, some would say it was way overused. Well, the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective series by ICOM Simulations attempted this particular concept as you visit the streets of London to solve cases all the while playing an interactive movie. What do you suppose it adds up to? Time will tell, Watson. Time will tell. The original 1991 release, appearing on multiple platforms, was ported to the TurboGrafx-16 CD-ROM. Inside the box itself, you also received the London Times. Even though they also appear in the game, I, I guess the physical paper turned you into a real-life sleuth. Volume 2 was released a year later for the Super CD-ROM, but it could also be played with the original CD system card. There was also a third volume released in 1993, but this one did not get ported to the Turbo Graphics. So basically, we have volumes 1 and 2, which are nearly identical. As a result, let's dissect the first one, for now. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is a point-and-click style game, as you move the magnifying glass around the screen and... click. To start the game, we have the Table of Contents. The Instructions tab will summon Dr. Watson, who will walk you through the different tools used for investigations. And drag it over into your notebook for easy reference. The Holmes Introduction tab will take you to... Uh, Holmes's Introduction. Here you will find the first full motion video clip, as Holmes talks about his investigative theories and techniques. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts after this clip, you'll get another instructions icon page, where Holmes introduces the major players you will be running into throughout the quest. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say sitting encyclopedia of the officer's affairs. Skipping down quickly to the bottom, we see save and load, which are pretty self-explanatory. You can return to this table of contents page during play at any time and save the game to resume it later. Now, the meat and potatoes. Three individual cases, which include the mummy's curse, the case of the mystified murderess, and the case of the tin soldier. Clicking on one takes you to a video clip with Holmes and Watson discussing the case. Because, I dare say, I do believe this murderer is a much younger chap. Then, the game begins by revealing your main navigation screen. Get used to this one because you'll be spending a lot of time here and it contains all of your necessary gameplay. To solve each case, you must use as many resources as possible. Reading the London Times, talking to the Baker Street Irregulars, scanning the directory, and more are just a click away. Essentially, you need to find out as much information as you can. Using the horse and carriage icon, you can visit and interview various people. Most will have a cutscene. Never seen them before. Haven't seen them since. Now you can choose to shut off the vocal or video presentations, but you really need to pay attention to what they say in order to gather clues. Although be careful because there are a lot of red herrings. If you visit a place that has no information, you will usually get a grainy still or something like. This appears to have been a royal waste of time. <sighs> Sorry. Some of these resources will add points to your score, so be careful. Points? Yeah. The goal is not only to solve the case, but to do it in as few points as possible, hopefully beating Sherlock Holmes himself. The video clips are obviously in a small box and extremely compressed, but I mean, it's early CD-ROM full motion video, and I hate to use this phrase, but it is what it is. The frame rate is jerky at times, and the speech is often not in sync. Well, you'll have to ask him for the specifics. Some scenes look better than others, though, especially ones that appear to be shot much brighter. One thing I have to say is that the acting overall is quite good. 
Are you going to stand for that, Holmes? Let's just see who proceeds to solve this case, Watson. The chemistry between Holmes and Watson especially shines, and it makes you feel like you're watching a real story. You know what I mean? Also, the voices are pretty clear in comparison to other Turbo CD games at the time, which often were harsh and scratchy. Actually, we don't have a client on this one. Eh, just for fun, eh? Other than the opening music, though, there's not much else in the sound department. Anyway, once you are ready, talk to the judge. If he feels you have collected enough clues, you will be allowed to answer questions about the case. Get them wrong, <laughs> you're sent back out. If you answer them all correctly, bam, you win. You'll receive a final video clip wrapping things up and a spec sheet showing how many points it took you to solve the case. You will probably lose to Sherlock the first time around, but the question is, can you solve the case in less points next time? Uh, maybe. You've solved it already. Elementary, my dear Watson. Volume 2 begins with a different title screen and music, but the table of contents has the exact same selections, with the instructions tab calling on Dr. Watson, and Holmes's introduction showing the exact same video as before. The only real differences are the three new cases available, which include the two lions, the pilfered paintings, and the murdered munitions magnate. Each case begins with an introduction, I believe someone has left a note upon our door. Then opens up the same interface as before, just altered a bit visually. I also noticed that the magnifying glass moves around the screen a tad faster, and the judge is full motion video versus just a simple voiceover. You've done a most satisfactory job on this case. I must point out that the video quality on Volume 2 looks a tad better with less compression artifacts and brightly lit sequences. At times though, the darker scenes in Volume 1 tend to have a slightly warmer feel. Otherwise, Volume 2 plays out exactly the same as before and feels like merely a continuation of the first. She says she makes it a point not to poke her nose into the business of others. If we followed that advice, we'd never get anywhere, would we, Watson? Sherlock Holmes' consulting detective is a thinker's game. It is devoid of any action or fast-paced anything, really. In fact, the loading times can be a bit harsh, but it is what it is. The game requires patience, note-taking, and the ability to put clues together and form a conclusion. Although, let's face it, most of the solving merely requires you to talk to the correct people and visit specific places that the game feels is necessary. Where the games shine are in their excellent performances, smooth execution of stories, and a really good tone, which follows closely the style created in the Sherlock books. Sitting down with someone and taking on a case for the first time is fun as you and a friend try to solve it together. I've always enjoyed this series a little, as I tend to like the atmosphere of crime and mystery. But overall, they're not the best playing games in the world, so I doubt you'll ever want to redo the same case again to even attempt beating Holmes at his own game. The two Sherlock games with their early full motion video represent a unique place in CD-ROM and home console gaming history. But they're not going to appeal to everyone and as a result they're kind of hard to recommend. Aside from the cases and a couple of minor things, both volumes feel the same. As a result, they both receive the same rating. I'll leave this one up to you to decide. If it looks like something you can get into, then grab your hat, pipe, CD-ROM, and notebook, because the game's afoot.